Star Wars team. We're so excited to be here at New York Comic Con. Who's excited to talk some Star Wars? Yeah. Alrighty, so here's the team you see before us. Uh, there's me, Patrick Schneider. That's my son right there. Such a cute photo. Had to throw it in. And we've got Sam and Maria as well, rounding out the team. Um, so obviously, we're going to dive right in. We've got a lot to talk about. Three months from now, we will see, finally, in theaters, the conclusion of the Skywalker saga with the rise of Skywalker. Who's excited for the rise of Skywalker? Yeah! So, just to get us all in the right mood, we're gonna gratuitously show the trailer, because we love the latest trailer so much. So let's take a look. Lights! Lights! there so thank you for uh, rolling with the uh, the tech but um, so that was the rise of Skywalker we're so excited for the movie kicking off all of the excitement this fall was Triple Force Friday just two days ago yeah let's hear from Triple Force Friday it was an amazing event fans everywhere got their first crack at new product uh, and we wanted to share with you some pictures of the Hasbro team uh, we are all passionate fans as well, and we were just excited about Triple... Yeah, there's Jordan Liv from our design team. Uh, we were just as excited about Triple Force Friday as everyone else. Uh, you can see Sam and I kind of looming in the background there. So we were excited to get out to stores and see kind of the product that we've been working on for a long time in stores, and hopefully you guys were excited as well. Um, and of course, Triple Force Friday kicked off on Good Morning America and with a live stream a week and a half ago. Uh, you can see some of the reveals here, but if you haven't already, definitely check out the live stream on the Star Wars YouTube page. Uh, reveals included all of the Triple Force Friday properties, uh, Fallen Order, The Mandalorian, and The Rise of Skywalker. 
Uh, the excitement continued last week at our desk side events. Uh, you can see our limited edition carbonized collection and first edition white packaging here. We'll talk about those a bit later. Uh, limited quantities of those were produced, so you can get them in stores now if they're still available. Sam, over to you. <laughs> All right, so first up, we're gonna just showcase our Ultimate Dio. Yeah, we're gonna roll a TV commercial for that. Yeah, Ultimate so Dio. Ultimate Dio, we, uh, in our home below, I mean, kind of stole the show. I believe it was even Daisy Ridley <laughs> herself to refer to it as an engineering marble. Yes. Uh, we certainly think so. Uh, you know, it's a self-balancing mono wheel that utilizes uh, app-based controlled accelerometer, and uh, ultimately it's uh, a huge advancement in tech that we have uh, are excited to play in. Yeah, the engineer on that project, when he heard that, he, he swooned a bit. He said that from now on, that was just going to be his resume. My product was called an engineering marble by Daisy Ridley. So, uh, so here's a look at the TV commercial for that product. Featured in the upcoming Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Say hello to Ultimate Deal. Controllable via smart device. Responsive to voice and sounds. And a big fan of playing ball. Ultimate Deal. Just the droid you're looking for. I'm required. Ask your parents. Smart device and batteries not included. Aw, so cute. <laughs> All right, so we have a full line of Dio actually uh, able to support uh, Triple Force Friday. So not only will you find him on uh, our Ultimate Dio, but we also have an RC Dio at a lower price point, as well as one of our great new Spark and Goes uh, alongside BB-8. So all available in store now. Um, we're excited to sort of have this new droid form uh, added to the universe. Absolutely. All righty, over to you, Maria. Awesome. So this next item we hope is going to have kids screaming from all corners of the galaxy is our new screensaver. So unlike traditional screensavers that are a little bit more on the serious side, that seem to be a little bit more closer to the entertainment, we kind of went to the lighter side with this. We're really excited to let kids play with screensavers their way. They can pre-record they can pre-record their own sounds. There are some onboard sounds as well, so Chewy or BB-8. So imagine how fun it is to wield that lightsaber and see kind of the cool action, all the same saber fun that kids have, but in a really different way. So we're pretty excited about this. Whole new place for us. So let's roll the commercial for that as well. A Star Wars lightsaber like no other. For a very different kind of battle. <laughs> Record your own sound. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this is it. This isn't our kid focus slide, but I've actually had a ton of fun with it. Kind of recording my favorite Star Wars phrases, like the Emperor, you know, so be a Jedi, and hearing the saber modulate that. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, cool. Great. All right. Alrighty, moving on. All right. So next, we're going to talk about Galaxy of Adventures. This was an all-new expression that we uh, revealed at San Diego, uh, but it's a new five-inch expression that really uh, is kind of tethered and driven for kids. So. Uh, it lets the characters be seen in a whole new light that's really inspired by the Galaxy Adventure uh, entertainment that we've been seeing on YouTube. Um, so it's an all new style. Each of these figures, again, is a, a stylization of those characters. Um, and they have a great action feature that really makes them playable. It's great to get in the hands and uh, you know, styling. We're seeing a great response from both kids as well as from uh, fans. Uh, so these were the figures that we saw at SDCC. Uh, again, you'll have Chewbacca, Han Solo, uh, C-3PO and Darth Vader, and then they'll be joined up uh, with some new characters from the new entertainment. Uh, so we'll have Finn, Kylo Ren, uh, the First Order Jet Trooper, Rey, our droid three-pack that has R2, BB-8, and Dio, and of course the new um, jet bike. I only know this as a code name. I <laughs> First order tread speed. There we go. There he is. <laughs> uh, complete with the, the new driver figure. So again, all the figures as well as the vehicles themselves have that great action feature inside of them. And again, 
it really uh, allows that to be in addition to some new articulation for the figures without actually hindering it. So everything is able to kind of clutch past its point, be fully posable, and nothing is um, sacrificed in order to have that action feature. And this is going to be one that we actually just revealed yesterday. Uh, this is going to be Luke Skywalker. Um, so this kind of uh, celebrates Luke Skywalker from Return of the Jedi. So it's um, able to sort of represent a couple different costumes for Luke. With a removable tunic, you have both his um, Luke as he appears at the beginning of Return of the Jedi, uh, as well as with the tunic removed, you have sort of that Endor captive and sort of the final scenes as he fights against Vader and the Emperor. And look for more Galaxy of Adventure figures, adventure figures to come in 2020, which we will be revealing later this fall. Great. Okay. So next up is our Skywalker Saga commemoration collection. So we are at the culmination of the saga, and we wanted to create something special for our fans to be able to kind of celebrate that. So the first three we had revealed, um, they're sort of honoring the original trilogy and really touches upon some of our, you know, our heroes, classic troopers, and then you know, the most iconic villain in the galaxy. So this is sort of a really exciting start to that collection. Absolutely. Okay, so to this point, everything we've showed you has already been revealed. So we've recapped a lot of our Triple Force Friday product in a short amount of time. Who thinks we should start getting to some product that Hasbro is officially revealing for the first time? Yeah! All righty. So our next wave of Skywalker Saga items will be on shelves in about a month. Now, obviously, these items right here celebrate the original trilogy. The next wave should obviously celebrate the prequel trilogy, starting with... Darth, <laughs> not Jar Jar, not yet, That's, we'll see where that comes. Darth Maul and Yoda. Uh, so obviously it was great. I remember in 1999 getting that awesome new villain, Darth Maul, and seeing Jedi Master Yoda return to the screen. So next up in that same wave, we'll see Mace Windu and Jango Fett. So obviously the father of all bounty hunters with Jango Fett and Samuel L. Jackson's effortlessly cool Jedi Master. And then finally, in that same wave, in about a month, obviously for the prequel trilogy, you have to have our Jedi heroes, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker. So this is the wave that will be coming to Walmart in about a month. And then moving on to our wave of Skywalker Saga figures that should, should hit shelves right before the holidays. This first one was revealed on the live stream last week. Our droid three pack of C-3PO, R2-D2, and BB-8. So now obviously we're celebrating the sequel trilogy. Uh, Star Wars isn't Star Wars without those great droids. Next up in that wave right before the holidays, we've got our resistance buddies, Finn and Poe. And then of course, Rounding out the entire collection, you've got to have the new hero and villain of the new trilogy, Rey and Kylo Ren. So, really excited about this set to celebrate the entire Skywalker saga. Yeah, and I think what's even cooler about this set is the imagery that complements not just the front of the packaging, but on the back of the packaging. We've done a really good job being able to work with Lucasfilm to integrate this into the packaging to create a beautiful mur mural. Um, what's kind of neat about this is there's a couple of additions. So we added Dooku at the top. He wasn't originally in this image, and we thought he needed to get some recognition, so we put him in. And then the last for episode nine, you see this was actually original artwork that Hasbro worked really closely with Lucasfilms to develop, but that didn't exist initially, and so we're really psyched about that. So this is all very complimentary, and then they really can stand alone very nicely, but what's really cool about this, and kind of my favorite here, is how they come together to create this beautiful mural. I think is a really awesome image, and just kind of shows over time what what this brand was and where it has gone and how amazing it continues to be with heroes and villains alike. Absolutely, and we'll have all of this product. Uh, we have interviews later today, so tune in to your favorite media outlets or fan sites for imagery of the actual product. Um, so, all of this stuff has been great. Scream Saber, Dio, Skywalker Saga, but we come to these conventions most excited to talk about Black Series and Vintage. So, let's move on to the Vintage Collection. Yeah, let's hear it from the Vintage Collection. I love it. 
So we love the Vintage Collection. This is obviously uh, one of our two fan-focused lines. So super articulated, that classic three and three quarters inch scale going all the way back to the Kenner days. Uh, highly decoed in the great vintage classic packaging. So a week and a half ago, we revealed these items on the live stream. Our first wave of Triple Force Friday product. You can see three of the six items right here. Um, just a fun couple facts about these. The Knights of Ren, uh, first representation. We obviously saw these back in 2015, a glimpse of them in that vision in episode uh, seven. Uh, first representation in our line of one of these characters. Uh, we're really excited. We aligned as a team on kind of which out of the bunch we thought looked the coolest. I'm really excited to bring one of the characters from that huge group. Um, all of these card backs, um, so I think the card backs have been seen, but all of these card backs are actually composites. Uh, we talk with our brand design team, it's actually a lot of fun kind of learning that process. <coughs> Obviously some of the vintage collection items are stills from the movie sets, just because these items are coming out actually before the movies, these are composites of set photos and actor images because those film outs were simply not available. These are so hot off the presses. Um, so all of these are on shelves right now. So if you like the look of them, head up to your local Walmart or Target or Amazon. Um, these are the other three items in the wave right here. Uh, so also on shelves right now. So Luke, as you know, was an early release in our SDCC special action figure set. Uh, and the Poe Dameron was actually revealed in Luca, uh, Comic and Games in Italy last year. Uh, we revealed the Poe figure, but since then we saw that, we would, that he would retain his outfit from Episode 7, but we were able to update the helmet. There are some slight differences in the helmet to Episode 9, uh, so we were able to place this on that great Rise of Skywalker Episode 9 card back, card back. so bringing some newness to this figure, which is really exciting. But obviously, figures are not all that the vintage collection is all about. That's right. We have world building. Uh, so that's really the important part of uh, what the vintage collection offers over uh, other product that we do is really the world that it's able to construct given the scale. Um, so, you know, to do something like an X-Wing, it's very feasible to do uh, in a line like the vintage collection, whereas we look at it for something like the Black Series, to do a six inch scale uh, X-Wing, I think it's actually four by four feet. So. Big. And expensive. <laughs> That's true. Uh, but ultimately, what we're able to do as we get into three and three quarter is, um, you know, we've uh, been able to bring in some some classic vehicles as well as get some uh, much needed newness into the line. So uh, we have our Red Five X Wing. It's actually the first time that we've done uh, Red Five as part of the vintage collection. He's only it's only been out there as uh, Biggs's Red Three. Um, but we also were able to um, do an all new T70 X Wing. So, this is a brand new sculpt uh, done directly for the vintage collection, similar to what we did with the hover tank and with the Java skiff. Again, this was designed with the vintage collector in mind. So, it is a beautiful scaled vehicle, scaled appropriately to the figures, uh, has full retractable landing gear, and again, all that landing gear tucks up into the body and has uh, panels that cover up over it, uh, has removable. Um, uh, details so that you can actually see sort of more of the inner workings of the X-Wing itself. Uh, and of course you have that droid port that can support both BB units as well as an R2 unit. Um, and I think the thing that I love the most about is actually the retractable ladder from, uh, from underneath that you can connect onto the side of the body, which uh, just makes it so great to pose the vehicle out. And then lastly we have our ATST Raider. So this was a new vehicle that we saw in concept art for the Mandalorian and everything that we're seeing in terms of see this come to sort of live action is incredible to see these uh, kind of brought to the screen. So this is an all new deco treatment, uh, again, um, done in styling after the Mandalorian. It does have a few bits of soft goods that actually are infused over the joints and a really uh, kind of unique deco treatment in terms of the two tone with the brown and the red legs. Uh, and then something we really wanted to be able to do, we saw all these great new figures uh, or characters being introduced with this. So actually being able to do one of these new platoon? Uh, if you don't know, I certainly don't know, Sam. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's like platoon, but uh, it's the platoon. Uh, so uh, this is actually a partially new tooled figure. Uh, so it's a new head, new head piece, um, and a new um, holster as well as a new kind of body wrap. Uh, which is actually done over a weak weight figure. So we had a nice little 
uh, spinning and blending of a couple of different Star Wars species there. Absolutely. I remember like learning that this was because Sam knows the line a lot deeper than I do over the years. Learning that we had never done a Luke Skywalker X-Wing. And that's the thing I love is that there's, there's still the opportunity, even after all these years, to be doing these great iconic vehicles for the first time. So it's an exciting time. All right, so next, I think some people have seen the, this a little prematurely, but we're revealing it here for the first time, right? This was on the live stream. Oh, we did this yesterday. That was such a blur. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's been a busy week. It's been a busy week. So this is Luke Skywalker in his Yavin ceremony outfit. So this is actually the first time that Luke has, uh, in his Yavin outfit has been on the vintage card back. Again, this is a figure that was never released as part of the original 92. Uh, this is the third time that we've done Luke in the Yavin ceremony outfit. Um, in the three and three quarter inch scale, but we're really happy with how we got it this time. So it does use an all new digital portrait um, to give it an all new head and hair, new hands, uh, as well as a photo real face portrait. And then as we were constructing this figure, we noticed the forearms for this were enormous. Uh, so we actually were able to repurpose the forearms from uh, Panda Baba. Uh, which actually allowed them to be a little bit shorter, um, just because they happen to share that same jacket. Cool. All right. Who's ready to see some new reveals that Hasbro's officially shown for the first time for the Vintage Collection? That guy right there is. All right. I think it's you, Sam. Oh. All right. So first up is going to be... Uh... So... Yeah, so I think these are a couple products that have been out in super articulated form before, uh, but we're coming out for the first time this fall on a vintage card back. So we've heard from you all that you appreciate some of these smart repacks, but that we've honestly been, done a bit too much of them in the past year and a half, and we always say we kind of do listen to this feedback. So we're looking to strike that balance of characters that really make sense to put on a vintage card back for the first time. So the first one we're showing officially here for the first time is... Java. So uh, again, another one where it was part of that original early bird set. This is a great figure to get back out onto the card back. It uses our 2014 Black Series Jawa uh, and ultimately is able to bring him to that card back uh, and really pay homage to the original uh, figure release. Great. And I'll look at the packaging with VC number 161. We know those numbers are important. So, and this is on shelves later this fall. Great. All right. Next up, we're going to have. Princess Leia Organa in her Yavin oh, ceremony wow. outfit. Um, so this was actually a great yeah, figure yeah. to be able to revisit, especially being able to update the portrait for Photoreal. This is one where we were sort of on that cusp of moving over to a digital environment. Um, so we had these phenomenal sculpts uh, for the figures themselves, but we weren't really able to catch up in terms of the paint. So now post 2018, we're now doing Photoreal on all of our three and three quarter inch scale. Uh, and it really did a, an excellent job of uh, bringing that sculpt forward to really be able to showcase the portrait. Great. And a look at this packaging right there. Beautiful. And again, this is another one. Yavin Ceremony didn't see part of its release with the original collection. This is the first time seeing Leia on that Yavin Ceremony card back. Of course, she does come with a Yavin Ceremony medal for potentially the best uh, co-pilot in the yeah. galaxy, who doesn't so happen to get one in the cinematic universe. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, and similar from a, similarly from a packaging point of view, uh, similar to Yavin Yu, Yavin, Yavin Lu, there were actually only three images available due to the limited reference for the scene in the original movie. So we had limited selection, but picked a good one. Um, so the VC number for this one, a little bit, bit of business here, you'll notice it's VC 150, which is a yeah, that missing number that's a little lower than the other one. So. Um, as you may recall, Darth going back a year and a half in the past, yeah, we revealed a Darth Revan repack at SDCC last year. Uh, we thought that was a smart repack, but like I said, we're always listening to feedback, and the feedback that we heard was that that figure was great in its day, but just wasn't up to the standards here in 2019. So to that end, we heard that feedback, we changed course, we removed Darth Revan from the line, and replaced that slot with this item, which from, again, the comments we heard at conventions and online, we knew was a smarter repack. So at this point, no plans to do Darth Revan in the future, maybe that'll change if that makes sense, but this item, I know we can talk about that in the Q&A. Uh, this item's on shelves later this fall, which is great. So next up, one of the coolest looking Certainly one of the coolest. This one's going to go a little bit deeper into the cuts of the expanded universe, but that's going to be our uh, elite shadow trooper. Um, so this is. Uh, I 
personally love the Shadow Trooper. It's a great design. Obviously, it had a lot of um, you know influence where we saw the Death Troopers sort of make their debut in Rogue One. So it's something that's always been a part of kind of the expanded universe canon. We're really excited to make it part of the um, the vintage collection itself. So this use is our um, the the Rogue One Stormtrooper that we did. So again, it's that definitive version of a fantastic base body for the character. We did do a new. Uh, Cauldron and ammo pouches for the character, as well as including both his Rogue One E11 as well as a DLT 19 Heavy Blaster. So, we take a look at the packaging for that one there. Yeah, so obviously this figure is based on a video game, not live action, so it was a lot of fun for our design team to imagine a realistic scene for that film out. And as you can see, BC-163 on shelf later this fall. So next up, another trooper, this time from the new movie, <laughs> Who's excited for the yeah. Sith Trooper? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we've seen uh, a lot of excitement building for this character. In the Six Inch, we got to debut it at San Diego Comic Con, and of course, we've seen uh, a couple reveals and releases of that character um, coming out on Triple Force Friday. So a lot of great um, newness uh, to get behind in terms of these. These are brand new uh, Stormtrooper design for uh, the Rise of Skywalker. Uh, and of course, we're seeing some great influence from kind of the phase two of the clone trooper brought into the helmet, and definitely some of the, the cues, while still feeling very much um, uh, constructed within the time period of the First Order. So we have a couple different uh, weapon accessories that come with this. We switch over to the packaging image. Um, so it does include kind of their default heavy blaster, as well as one of the First Order mega blasters, um, which actually are unique to the Sith troopers in that they have a little scribe detail on the top, yeah. which of course I love that. resulted in us needing to make an all new gun. Absolutely. All right, we've got so much more to get through. We're gonna move through a little more quickly. Uh, now, as a vintage fan, you may be saying, it's great you're getting the Sith Trooper in vintage, but at SDCC, we had a version of this Trooper with a full armory. Well, for the first time here, we're showing our Sith Trooper armory pack. Now our friends at Lucasfilm did an awesome job of sharing these great armory accessories. We wanted to share that love with our vintage community as well, where troop building is so important. So we scaled down the accessories from that SDCC item for this pack uh, and for this packaging. So if you take a look at that packaging, uh, the film out, we had limited reference. You'll notice the, the image is somewhat similar to the previous one, uh, but we worked hard with our friends at Lucasfilm to get that additional pose in this different environment to make that composite. You'll notice it's BC-162A. Uh, we always, when we're looking at packaging, look at the principles that have been established for the vintage collection to keep that expression consistent, as we know that you guys highly value that. Um, as we started discussing this item, we realized there was no precedent for a figure like this. Uh, so it was kind of exciting for us to create a new precedent for the future. Uh, we reasoned that assigning the Vintage Collection 162A was best in keeping with past principles. So that's what we did, and this is on shelves later this fall. So our final reveal today that we're showing for the first time for the Vintage Collection, again, we know that the OT is close to the heart of vintage fans everywhere, which our final item we're showing here for the first time today is... The Cave of Evil Special Action wow. Figure Set. I know, wow, I love it. Uh, this is a great way to revisit some of those awesome characters that we've done previously in the line. Obviously, photoreal deco on all three characters, newly tooled sculpts for the Luke and Yoda heads to better facilitate the photoreal deco. Uh, Yoda's also updated with better articulation to make it specific to this film, but better represented in the vintage collection. Um, the packaging looks great, also on shelves uh, at Target later this fall. So exciting. Uh, such a great lineup here for the fall. Yes. Yeah. So that's a look at our entire vintage collection. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good line. Woo! Uh, that's the whole vintage collection line for the fall. Obviously, we have the barge, all the barge-related items in the spring. Uh, it's been a great year for the vintage collection, and we are excited for the future. Uh, but now, on to... Oh, the Black Series. Yeah. Yeah. Great job, guys. So the Black Series, this is a relatively new part of our overall line, but if you can believe it, it's already six years old. Um, so we're really excited to be able to kind of take this into new spaces as we go through that expanded universe. Um, so we'll take a look at the first wave revealed a week ago, representative of sort of all corners here, the rise of Skywalker, 
um, Jedi Fallen Order and The Mandalorian. And then we also have the First Order Trooper. We've updated him. He's going to be kind of having a new helmet. He'll have new elbows, so he's a little bit more articulated. And we've given him some, some more meaningful accessories. So we're excited. This is a great look for our first wave. And these are all on shelf right now. Yes. So get out and get them. Yes. And then our white packaging. What was this all about? If you guys go back in the way back machine to 2015, um, when we were kind of introducing Black Series as part of new entertainment, the first box was done in white. So we wanted to honor that. So we've done a limited run of this variant. So if you can find them in stores, awesome. Know that this is a limited run. But that's sort of the, the history, if you would, behind white packaging as part of our first wave. Harkening back to that as 2015 SDCC, early release of the First Order Trooper. So come in full circle here today. Yeah. And then next, our Carbonized. We love to celebrate what we've done and, and knowing how much you guys loved it. So we are kind of bringing back um, for some of our new helmeted characters this Carbonized look. Um, and just so you know, these are not molded colors. Believe it or not, these are actually, every detail is painted on these. So we're really excited about these. Sam and I really love the candy apple red. I'm pretty sure Patrick is uh, falling in love with the Mandalorian. I'm a Mandalorian so man we, we all have our favorites for this one, but they're they're gorgeous. And if you take a look at the packaging, the pearl one in particular, um, we use a very specific substrate here, so you can actually see flecks and sparkles in the packaging. It's not just that ink printing, so it's really unique that way. I mean, seeing these up, this, this doesn't do it justice. You got to see these up close and personal. They're beautiful. Um, I'm relatively new to the team, and I gotta say these were probably the most impressive, but these are limited to some of our retailers, so you can go pick those up again. Pretty exclusive, so go out and find them. Yeah, they're on shelves right now in limited quantities, so if you like them, go get them. All righty, so last week we also revealed these two cool characters that will be in our wave later this fall. So you're seeing here Janna from The Rise of Skywalker and Cara Dune uh, from The Mandalorian. So Janna introduces accessories that we've really never seen in the Star Wars universe before, and it was great to bring these to the Black Series. Uh, the arrows that Janna has can actually be loaded into the bow and stored in the quiver on her back, uh, and that quiver was actually constructed from the gauntlet of a stormtrooper, so fun Star Wars fact there. And Cara Dune, you can actually unsheath her knife from her boot and utilize her butterfly joint to achieve some fantastic poses. So uh, those little details from uh, the screen is what we love bringing into the Black Series. Uh, we also revealed this Target exclusive, which is also on shelves right now. Uh, it's a great evolution of the First Order Elite Snowtrooper with a full hooded soft goods cloak. Uh, the soft goods actually presented our team with some challenges given the multiple colors, similar to General Grievous, which we did earlier this spring. Uh, we couldn't print those colors since it was double-sided, uh, so we had to have those double-sided soft goods. Um, there's some subtle deco <laughs> variants on the figure itself to the chest armor and backpack. Uh, but we're all really excited uh, to hopefully see this character get some more screen time in F9. Um, and that packaging as well, we did an all-new Illo to differentiate from the 2015 release uh, to, to make it as different as possible. So also on shelves right now. Also on shelves right now. There you go. All right, so this is going to be the Jedi Fallen Order Purge Trooper. So this is an all-new trooper design uh, for the game. It's actually the first time that I think we've seen the clone armor utilized as part of the uh, kind of the Empire as opposed to being during the time of the Clone Wars. So uh, it's a great way for us to be able to repurpose um, repurpose, uh, repurpose <laughs> some of our uh, existing uh, clone trooper from the six-inch line, as well as uh, being able to infuse some new parts. So. Uh, this design actually borrows uh, elements and visual cues uh, of actually doing the paratrooper helmet. Um, so it's the first time we're actually able to put that helmet into the line. Um, and of course doing it in that black and red deco scheme definitely helped to really make it unique to uh, the game itself. Uh, this is going to be exclusive to GameStop. Also on shelves later this fall. That's right. All right, next up. Oh, this one, I am. So in love with uh, So this is C-3PO as he appears um, in the rise of Skywalker. So this uh, has sort of been a combination of parts, sort of been making our way to like getting the, the perfect grade of uh, C-3PO. So uh, there's a couple different elements that you'll see uh, utilized here. Uh, obviously you see uh, C-3PO kind of wielding a uh, weapon for one of the first times. Um, so that's gonna be with Chewbacca's bowcaster as well as with this bandolier. So 
Uh, we've actually taken the uh, articulated elbows, so the full arms from our forelong figure, uh, to be able to have that range of articulation, actually get them into some pretty dynamic poses with that. Um, but we also made a slight uh, correction of this figure when we did um, uh, triple zero, uh, which was actually raising the legs uh, just slightly to actually be more accurate uh, in terms of the height, um, where we were a little off with our first initial one. But I'd say the biggest uh, addition here is probably with Babu Frick. Uh, so Babu Frick, if you missed him, he's in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, uh, true to scale within the six inch, um, and he's probably, uh, comes in just uh, around an inch tall. So uh, don't let that fool you. He still has uh, six points of articulation. So between um, ball jointed uh, shoulders, flat plane waist, uh, and an articulated visor uh, still offers a great range for the uh, Black Series. And as we progress one slide here, he has thermochromatic eyes. So we kind of, this character got debuted in the trailer with a little bit of a different look, uh, definitely having those red eyes, so that was something we were excited to do. So actually the whole back panel of C-3PO's head is removable. Um, and uh, the eyes themselves, when you introduce them to cold, uh, you can change the color to red. So that item was also on our live stream on shelf later this fall. Um, sorry, turn my breath for this. Oh. All right. I took this from a child, I apologize. I'm going to you. Yeah. Uh, so next up, we, uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. All right, this is our new Force Effects Elite Kylo Ren lightsaber. Oh, I'm going to bring the microphone right up to me. Uh, so this is actually a completely 100% newly sculpted Kylo Ren lightsaber. Uh, we did see a little bit of differences in terms of the sculpt, but also there was a lot of deviations with our original release of this saber. So a lot of those updates have been removed in addition to adding things like removable blades. All blades are removable from the saber itself. Um, we also have different uh, light progressions. So when you ignite it in a vertical orientation, everything comes on together. When you ignite it downwards, you get kind of those great trailer cinematics. Uh, it uses an accelerometer for the saber itself. Uh, and you can see that progression has actually really changed for these sabers. Uh, that's because we actually use an addressable LED array. So you can start to see kind of that crackling effect happening within the blades themselves. And also, we're able to introduce completely secondary colors. So you can see that clashing effect, we're actually able to have the whole blade change white. But we also have secondary features, so you can do blade deflections as well as wall cutting action for the saber itself. So we're really excited to bring this to our Force Effects line. Again, Force Effects itself was introduced in 2010, and we feel like this is definitely the future for these sabers, and feels like a really nice way to progress them uh, into going forward. Awesome. Thank you, Sam. All right. All right. Go we'll get that back to the child we still have there. <laughs> <laughs> so that item is on the shelves right now, and look for more Force Effects Elite lightsabers to come. So our next item was also revealed on the live stream yesterday. Uh, it's Luke Skywalker in his Jedi Knight outfit. Um, so we've done a version of this figure several years ago in Mainline, uh, but there were some key updates for this figure. He received an all-new tunic to best represent his outfit from the beginning of ROTJ, as well as a soft goods cloak to be more representative of that iconic scene in Jabba's palace. Uh, gloved hand, uh, no gloved hand, uh, new portrait, also in stores later this fall. Cool. Cool. So you guys ready for some first ever Hasbro reveals? Of Black Series. Black Series. So I think the first one starts off with one of our beloved mentors from the original trilogy here. So we have up our Force Spirit Yoda. Yeah. So we're exciting. So, you know, introduced alongside some of our other uh, spirited characters like Obi-Wan. Um, there were some really unique challenges, I think, with this one. Sam, you want to tell us a little bit about some of those? So uh, when we actually did Yoda originally, it was kind of an, uh, meant to represent more of an agnostic version of the character, so it was to represent sort of the full spanning of the saga. Um, so that nothing was really taken into uh, consideration in terms of what's underneath Yoda's robe, but when we do it with a metallic, soft good, translucent robe, it's like, okay, well, there's that doesn't look right. Uh, so it actually has a full secondary uh, soft good interior robe to really be more specific to Yoda as we see him in the original trilogy, as well as in the right, uh, which one is that? Uh, last last show. <laughs> cool, so next up, 
Uh, we have two items from our mainline wave, along with Jana and Cara Dune. Yes. Starting with? Starting with. Oh, Yoda's box. Sorry, Yoda's box. <laughs> Yoda's box. <laughs> All right, next up, two new items, cool. starting with? Our first order jet trooper. So you can see we took some cues from the Sith tro tro trooper to create this. Um, this was a new form for our first order. And we've got some updated accessories, a triple barrel grenade launcher. So really excited about this. And we can take a look at that packaging. Very nice, very nice. Great. And also then, on shelves later this fall? Yes. Great. Yes. And then our final reveal. So this sort of harkens back to that original trilogy. We know when we hosted our fan vote, we heard you guys. You had a lot of love for this next one. Wedge. Woo! And while, yeah. <laughs> while we didn't win the fan vote itself, it was a funny coincidence that we were going to be developing him for this part of our line. So as you can see, um, he is in our uh, epi his episode four X-Wing pilot outfit. We pulled some of the tooling from Luke to help to create him. And then he has all new photo reel deco, or sorry, photo reel on his face, and then new deco on the helmet. Very cool. We'll take a look at the packaging. Very nice. Okay, so we are all also very super excited about more upcoming entertainment with Disney Plus and Clone Wars is going to be part of all of that. So we are excited to do our next reveal. Will be part of Clone Wars. Clone Commander Fox. Very very cool character. Second to my uh, carbonized Sith Trooper. This one's probably my next favorite. Um, so we're happy to bring him in here. Um, he is one of the major clone commanders, as you all know, and we have outfitted him with some unique deco, an entirely new sculpted helmet, and then also a very proper arsenal of weapons. So he is ready to go. Very excited about this. Let's take a look at that packaging. Very nice. Awesome. Cool. All right, we want to have time for Q&A, so we're going to get through the rest of this in eight minutes, so we have ten minutes for Q&A. Next up, our next exclusive reveal, another item from The Mandalorian. It's IG-11. Yeah! Uh, we used some tooling from our existing IG-88 body, but with a newly tooled bandolier and holster and a unique screen-accurate deco scheme. Uh, we've got a lot of excitement. We've heard this about seeing an IG unit, you know, uh, 39 years later in full action. We're excited to see him come to life on the screen and in dioramas. So a look at that packaging, also on shelves later this fall. Okay, two reveals left to go. The first, these two are some of our favorite characters from the original trilogy, but we've never done them before from this particular movie. It's Chewbacca and C-3PO. This is the quintessential, iconic, final C-3PO. Uh, he has parts from all over our Black Series world, uh, which is very fitting. He's got updated arms from four long, all new hands, updated thighs, and an all new deco treatment specific to F5. Also an updated Chewbacca torso, all new head, uh, and what we believe to be the perfect grade OT E11 rifle. Now, you may be looking at these and saying to yourself that the most iconic part about C-3PO is missing from F5, well, C-3PO, yeah, removable limbs. And Chewbacca comes with a soft goods mesh backpack to carry him, so you're welcome, yeah. Uh, here you can see C-3PO in all of his disassembled glory. Um, as you can see, he comes with swappable wire plugs to replace his dismembered limbs for the ultimate in movie accuracy. All right, Sam, bring us home. I need a mic. Yeah. <laughs> So the last reveal for the Black Series is actually going to move into our roleplay category. Uh, we've done a few helmets before, we've shown and revealed quite a few this year. Um, but the new one is actually going to tether uh, in terms of a new exciting Stormtrooper variant that we're excited to see, which is actually going to be the Incinerator Trooper helmet. Um, so this is a helmet that we've seen uh, kind of debut as part of uh, video games, we've seen it um, kind of making its uh, live action debut, uh, and this is definitely one where we're really excited to bring this unique deco scheme uh, to the Stormtrooper helmet itself. Kind of different from any of the ones we've done before. This is actually matte top coated uh, to really align with how we see it in the entertainment, as well as having um, some you know heavier chipping and weathering uh, to really align it to uh, this sort of unique faction of Stormtrooper. Absolutely. Alrighty, and here on the slide that's loading now, 
a look at our entire Black Series line for the fall. We've got so many six inch figures, New Force FX Elite, Hyper Real figures, helmets, carbonized collection, not to mention everything that didn't, we did in the spring. So 2019 is great, 2020 here we come. So that's now, a, yeah, that's ahead. a lot of stuff. Yeah. And so this is just a little bit of a housekeeping for you guys, but we know we just talked about a lot of stuff. There's lots of things coming. So we've got a list, a checklist. You can find it on the Pulse website. We're gonna keep updating this list. So please go download it, bring it to the stores with you, keep track of everything. And we're gonna keep doing this. So we've heard you guys loud and clear. And we think this is just a great addition to the site. So. Absolutely. All right, more housekeeping. So the item you see here is a great convention exclusive celebrating Luke as he appears in the comics. Um, we know we have passionate fans around the world, some of them in the front row right here, um, not just in the U.S. And each year we like to make an exclusive available first to our great European fans at their convention. So this item launched at Berlin Comic Con a couple weeks ago and will be available at Paris Comic Con, London Comic Con, Luca in Italy, and Salon Manga BCN in Spain. Uh, but then, of course, we want to ensure that our great U.S. fans get it, uh, so it will be a fan channel exclusive after those European conventions have ended, starting on November 4th. Um, and obviously, as with all of our convention exclusives, the mainline figure itself, without the accessories, will be available in our mainline wave later this fall with that medal, and it has that medal to celebrate Luke in his Yavin outfit. Obviously a little different. Uh, quick question, uh, sorry, quick note now about the mainline release. Um, after we revealed this exclusive, images of the mainline release were made available online. Some of you have noticed that Skywalker uh, is misspelled several times on the package. Uh, it's obviously not intentional. Uh, we're very focused at Hasbro on quality control. Uh, we were all very bummed to see that. Um, we take all of our items very seriously. Um, we're aware of the error. We would have obviously prevented it if we could. Uh, we're working very quickly to correct that packaging. Uh, it will appear on store shelves in the current form, but we're working to make that correct packaging available as soon as possible. So, a uh, quick note there. Um, another housekeeping piece, uh, more business. So, as mentioned, we've awoken kind of in the past couple of years to the fact that we have amazing fans around the world. Should have realized it before, we have now, which is great. We've done convention exclusives available first in Europe. We've started attending those conventions. Uh, it's all great. But we also wanted to work to make our mainline offerings available more widely. Um, we've heard that there are strong distribution challenges and we're always working to fix those. So to that end, we have moved this fall, you may have noticed, to packaging that has one more translation on it than previously. But because of that, the same packaging that's available in North America can also be in Europe. It's not different packaging anymore. Uh, the upside of that is that we can get more product to Europe. Uh, the other uh, implication of that, without getting into all of the details, um, is that uh, the EU products require a slip sheet. That slip sheet will now be in US vintage figures as well. We wanted to let you guys know here so it wasn't a surprise. Um, again, without getting into the details, it will help us solve out some of our distribution challenges in Europe. Uh, we've worked hard, as you can see, to minimize it as much as possible, and we're sure that our U.S. fans will join us in this effort to help our friends around the world get the product that they love as well as you, as well as you guys. Um, and finally, we showed this item earlier. Uh, items like this special action figure set will now have that additional translation on the front, but again, a small price to pay to get these great items available globally. Um, final slide. Um, along those same lines, we are visiting even more global conventions this year. We anniversaried our visits to uh, Unboxing Toy Convention in Mexico and Canada's Fan Expo back in August, and we're expanding our EU convention tour. Sam and I are hitting the road, so come and join us. Uh, we're going to hit Paris Comic Con, MCM Comic Con in London, and Luca in Italy, just like last year. But this year, as mentioned, we will also visit our friends in Spain at Salon Manga BCN and our friends in Germany at Comic Con Dortmund. Uh, Last year, we only had a, like literally two reveals at each of those conventions. This year, due to the fact that we focused here this, uh, in this presentation on fall of 2019, we have a lot of 2020 products to reveal, so we will have more reveals at all of those EU conventions than we did last year. Yeah, nice. it's gonna be exciting. Uh, so come, follow Sam and I around Europe, it'll be a great time. One final note about everything we showed here, everything we revealed today is available you notice I said, all available later this fall. Available later this fall. Everything is available for pre-order Monday. 
So if you liked any of those items, and I'm sure you did, check out the pre-orders on the appropriate retailers on Monday. All right, we, this is perfect. We literally just got the 10 minute mark. We have 10 minutes for Q&A. So yeah, we'll just call on people, we'll repeat the questions, and we'll go from there. So I think I saw your hand first, sir. Um, so you should show that three pack. I, I know you photo real the face, but uh, no improvement to those loop elbows. That's a Sam's question. Uh, so, uh, no improvement to the elbow. We did uh, update, it's a brand new portrait for both Luke and Yoda, so there is a substantial improvement to the characters themselves. Um, unfortunately, with the elbows, in terms of being able to change it to any sort of a, a different joint, involves completely redoing the arms, which unfortunately, there wasn't the, uh, the dollars available for on that item. But um, again, we felt the portrait definitely did a huge improvement. And my follow-up question yeah. is, there's been rumors on the sites uh, in the last week that if this, these vintage collections uh, don't do well, that 3.75 inch are gonna go away. That is, Please say no. That is, no. no. <laughs> yeah. So, there are no plans. I don't know where that came from. There are no plans for that. You know, we plan out the lines. It is in the plans Jelly as much Temple as archives. That's yeah. what I came from. <laughs> it is. It is in the plans as much as Black Series Six is. So there are no plans. Vintage collection is alive and well. Yes. Uh, yep. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. Hi. Uh, any of the uh, foil stamping on any of your future cards? Any like on Jedi Three Pack um, that was out earlier? had that foil stamp around the race stripes in the yep. Star Wars logo. Is yeah, any, any of that on the, on the uh, vintage collection uh, that have that uh, retro packaging? Yeah, so our, the, the premium, the foil, yeah. So that's yeah. something we do for our convention exclusives. Uh, we like to make sure that those exclusives have kind of more special packaging. So we do diorama packaging for Black Series and we do special packaging treatments like that. Currently planned for our convention exclusives. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah, up there. I have three quick questions. When are you guys going to have a booth here at New York Comic Con and have New York Comic Con exclusives? And the Target Retro Collection that you just had, are you going to be doing more of that? And what is the six inch black series figure that comes with the video game? All great questions. There's three, so we'll do them quickly. Uh, New York Comic Con, we're always kind of looking at our convention presence. Obviously, we don't have a booth this year. Uh, we'll look at it for the future, but we're excited for the presence that we do have, the live stream in this panel. Uh, the second question was... The retro figures that were tar ex targeted yeah. exclusives. So as we always say, you know, if something's not revealed, we can't talk about it. This being said, obviously, you know, from what we've heard, you guys like the retro collection. Uh, it did well, so... You know, excited for the possibilities for the future. Um, and the final question? The uh, figure that comes from the video game, uh, what is it? Because I, I haven't read anything online yeah. of it. I'm actually, video. are you sure? Um, I, we're not entirely sure. We can follow up on that and get back to you. Um, all right, other questions. I'm trying to remember who raised their hand first. Uh, I think you right there, sir. Uh, is there any other updates on whether or not we're going to get a Zeb to complete the Black Series Ghost Crew? No other updates. Uh, so again, if we haven't revealed it, we can't talk about it. This being said, the Rebels crew is a great crew. I imagine, you know, I think two years ago we said we would complete it someday. I'm sure we'll complete it someday. Nothing to reveal today. Uh, yeah, right there in the front. Well, I'm, st I'm still waiting for my Jar Jar. I'm still <laughs> waiting for Jorah Sabath. We yep. gotta get those. Uh, but the question that a couple friends had was, you guys know anything about Hascon coming back again? It's a good question. Uh, Hascon, we loved it two years ago. We had a great time there. Um, th again, there it's are like no a Hasbro Toy Fair. Yeah, exactly. It was so much fun. We had a great time. We had a lot of fun. It was a great event. Uh, there are no kind of currently revealed plans, but we're always evaluating it for the future. Uh, right there. So can you tell us about that new value scale that just uh, is coming out and how that sort of blends with the three and quarter, there's much of a uh, that, that four inch scale? Yeah. Yeah, so obviously our value business is, is really important to us. We wanna make sure that Star Wars products get into the hands of kind of everyone, you know, regardless of, of uh, price point. Uh, so we're really excited about that. That's a 4.0 uh, POA two pack, uh, single pack, I believe for $3. Uh, so we think it's great, again, to get those figures into the hands of kids that, that want them and, and where the higher price points might not be uh, attainable. So we're always looking at our value line and ways to get those products out. But are they very different? Are they larger? Uh, they're currently four inches tall. So smidge larger. Yeah, smidge larger, yep. Yeah. Uh, and that's because we didn't want it to like it kind of conflict too much with the three and three quarters inch world. Right. Uh, yeah, right there. 
<laughs> there we go. That's a great question for Sam. Yeah. Um, Star Wars is a, a dream to, to work on. So uh, it's definitely, it was a very big childhood brand for me. Um, have an absolute blast. It is a joy to go to work every day. And definitely in terms of being able to finally share a lot of that product with you guys, is, uh, it's a dream come true. My favorite part is working with Sam. No. So, oh. there we go. Uh, all righty. Uh, how about some in the back? Uh, you with the red yeah. on, yep. Um, just real quickly, the uh, items that had the various different uh, brands, Walmart, uh, Amazon, were those items exclusive to those retailers? Yep, that is exactly right. Well, how, do those, how does that work out? How do you pick which exclusive is important to And is there any idea about maybe working with Toys R Us or what's their status? It's a good question. Yeah, we have a process where we kind of, you know, figure out what items are better suited for a retailer. We talk with them about what their needs are. Uh, in terms of working with Toys R Us in the future, again, kind of we're always evaluating those relationships. And as that evolves, you know, we're excited to see, we're excited to see the future there. Got Jedi ropes right there. Yep. So earlier in the year, there's something said about uh, packaging going forward having less plastic. Is that going to affect the Black Series packaging or any of the other vintage collection packaging? Yeah, so we're, we're excited about that initiative too. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, we made that decision as a company for several reasons. Obviously, we just believe it's the right thing to do. And also, it's something we're hearing from consumers that they kind of want that in their products moving forward. Uh, you know, as you may have heard, the goal is to start in 2020, but to complete it by 2022. And by 2022, to have virtually all plastic removed from our packaging. Uh, that's three years off. Uh, we're figuring out how we're going to do that. There's a lot of different things in play, changing packaging in some forms, uh, finding replacements for plastic in other situations. So we're figuring that out, but we're doing it with an eye to kind of uh, staying true to that environmental challenge while also still honoring the product for our fans. Uh, yep, there in the back. Uh, this is great. Number one, thank you. Oh, absolutely, thank you. How, how do you uh, uh, foresee the towers affecting this, or were they delayed on the tour? Yeah, uh, another good question. Uh, we don't have anything publicly to say today. We're always evaluating that situation and adapting as needed, and uh, kind of no current plans around that. Thank you. Uh, yep, there in the back with the blue. Yeah, uh, so each each of the carbonized figures is exclusive to a retailer um, in terms of those retailers. I believe Amazon had the uh, Sip Trooper, which is going to be the candy apple. Uh, Target has the Mandalorian. Walmart has the uh, the jet Pearl Jet Trooper. Um, and uh, the second sister is going to be for GameStop. Great question. Is that, is that line going to continue? Uh, as with everything, you know, if we haven't revealed it, uh, we can't. This being said, there's been good reaction so far. I would say if you want it to continue, go to buy some and we'll monitor Already sales done. and see. Great, awesome. That's great hey, Sam. Um, I know you guys spoke yesterday about how important uh, the vintage collection is, 42 years of it going. You said obligations. What's that? That, that you guys have obligations to us fans, which, Absolutely. Is, which is great. Uh, 2019 was a great year. Thank you guys. Uh, there was some great success with the barge, the skiff, uh, Java's playset. Um, I think a lot of OT collectors are hopping at the bit for more new tooling. And we had a few figures, right? We had Yak Face, Claw 2, uh, and X Wing Loop, which were great all new toolings. I know people want more new toolings for the OTs. Can you guys talk a little bit about tooling and what goes into that and if we're going to see more tooling for the OT in the future? Yeah, so I mean, as far as um, a budget for the, the vintage collection, uh, it's kind of allocated across the line. So uh, definitely when uh, we have like a new theatrical release, the opportunity to support the the, the new film, uh, as well as you know anything that's current entertainment, is absolutely going to kind of fall as kind of the key temple for us to be able to do. Just because it's you know the best representation is to get that product out there uh, right before the film and kind of been following after. But the really nice thing about Star Wars, as I mentioned, we have 42 years of entertainment, so there absolutely is. Uh, we are in no way um, you know pressed for like not having enough characters to be able to do. So I think it's really just a matter of finding that blend of how much we're supporting 
all of that entertainment. So between um, you know the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, the sequel trilogy, you know realistic forms of animated characters and stuff. There's a lot of different opportunities for us to bring new product into the line, uh, and sort of as we find that right balance, I'd say in years where maybe we don't have a movie is a great opportunity for us to be able to shift and focus a lot of that tooling towards some of those, which is why, as you mentioned, with the barge and all the product that was in, kind of in, out in support of that, we had sort of that lift of a um, kind of an entertainment um, from a film standpoint to be able to lean into some of that. So uh, I would say there's certainly going to be some great opportunities upcoming to get into completing a bit more of uh, some of those missing characters within the vintage collection. And I'd say there's certainly a robust line ahead, so we look forward to getting some of those figures out to you guys. And I would say as we get into, time is up. Uh, last little tag, as we get into 2021 and beyond, like obviously the entertainment at that point is more tethered to the OT with The Mandalorian. Clone Wars is obviously more prequel trilogy with those original movies, and so there's an opportunity to get into that entertainment that's more tied to the original movies. Um, time is up. This was fantastic. Thank you guys so much. We love meeting with fans like you.